Welcome to the first golf vlog of 2023 on Golf with Jen. So for the first golf vlog of this year, I've selected a vlog which I actually recorded last year but I did not have the time to upload but it has relevance into one of the goals that I'm going to be working on this year. I hope you enjoy this course vlog at the beautiful Bukit Ungo. So I've only played at this golf course twice and both times I've recorded it on my vlog but if I were to redo this hole, I would definitely just hit something shorter. I almost ran out of fairway and went into a drain that was out on the right side of this fairway but fortunately I got lucky and was still on green grass and was able to hit a shot however as you can tell from not the best lie. The ball came up pretty high with the stance that I had, so I ended up being a little bit short of this green. But it's not too bad, it is a front pin so I don't have too long of a chip here. As you can tell the greens are pretty sandy, so over here just trying to get good contact and hopefully give myself a par. On this next hole we have a par 3. I don't know if you can tell from the screen but the entire left side of this green was actually sanded and the pin was located just right of the entire sandy area so basically you could not hit it anywhere left of this pin if you wanted to give yourself a decent putt if not you would just be putting through sand. I think you have a better idea of what I meant just now. You can see the entire left side of this green was sanded so that was definitely an interesting obstacle for today especially with the pin position but it was still fun to play out there and just make sure that I hit it to the part of the green that I wanted to which is what I successfully was able to do to give myself a putt for birdie. <laughs> on the next hole we have an elevated par 5 the tee shot has water hazard down the right side but it is pretty far out towards the right so most of the time it's not in play but for the approach shot we do need a little bit of planning but first let's get this tee shot out there So like I said, for the approach shot, there's a little bit of planning because this green is elevated. So leaving yourself in a good position for your third shot is important. As you can tell, I have 235 yards with the slope it was playing about closer to 255. So there was no chance of me getting close enough that it would be worth it for me to try to go closer to the green as there are bunkers surrounding it as you can see on the left side of this green. Therefore, I chose to give myself a full shot into this green and just lay up with a hybrid. After the layup, I gave myself 80 yards which is playing closer to 90 yards with the elevation. Like you can see, the bunkers down the left side definitely did not come into play with my layup, giving myself a full shot into this green which I think is super important, especially when it's one of those awkward little distance where it's almost better to hit a full shot than leave yourself with an awkward distance where you're neither chipping nor hitting a shot. So especially with wedges into par 5s, I think this kind of planning and setting yourself up with a good distance into the green that you will be comfortable with as close as possible is important to give yourself a good chance to have a putt for birdie. So I think you can tell based on the reaction that I did not hit that shot exactly where I wanted to. 
However, I still left myself with an uphill birdie putt here, a 15 footer, so a relatively decent birdie opportunity. It's important that after you hit a shot, yes, you can analyze your mistakes. If you don't hit a good shot, obviously you can be a little bit upset. However, it's also important to note that you're not always going to hit good shots. Just because you have a wedge in hand doesn't mean you have to stick it close. Looking at statistics, not every single pro is going to stick a wedge, whether it be a 60 degree or a pitching wedge, let alone an amateur. So it's okay to analyze your shot after you hit a shot. However, once you get to the next shot, you need to be able to focus on that so that you can commit all your energy into producing the best shot possible for the next shot rather than dwelling on the previous shot. Moving on to the next hole which is a pretty interesting par 4. It is a dog leg right. Like I said, I'm not a regular here so I'm not super familiar with the course but I do know that I am able to cut the corner a little bit. I just don't know how much. There is a big slope down the fairway so it's one of those things where the further right you go, the chances are you're going to get a shorter approach shot. But as I'm not 100% confident, I'm still going for the relatively safer route. <laughs> After the tee shot, I left myself in a good position. The ball didn't run as much as I expected it to, so I am on a little bit of a down slope. Being a little bit in between distances, I figured that with the down slope, the ball was going to come out a little bit lower which meant it was not going to fly as far. However, I also expected the ball to draw a little bit but I just didn't know how much because of the grass that I was in. I don't know if you can tell but it was a little bit thicker so it was kind of like I was hitting from a rough. So although I was aiming to hit it left of the pin, the grass and the light ended up pulling it more than I thought it was going to. But coming up here, I realized that this was just a generally difficult pin position because from where I'm chipping, the entire green is actually downhill. So even with this chip shot, it was pretty difficult to determine where to land the ball because I know that it's downhill so it's going to release. However, it's cow grass. If I land it short of the green, I don't know how the ball is going to react because cow grass can definitely grab it and leave me with an awkward downhiller instead so I decided to be a bit more aggressive and worst to worst give myself something that's going to be an uphill putt for par. So we managed to walk away with a par on previous hole but like I said in the beginning of the video, one of the reasons why I wanted to post this video is because it is related to one of the goals that I want to work on for this year. In the previous two holes, I just gave myself two wedges which meant two opportunities to give myself a decent look at birdie. For the par 5, like I said, I didn't hit it exactly where I wanted to directionally and therefore I had much longer of a putt than I was expecting. And for the previous hole, I just completely misanalyzed the lie and gave myself a chip rather than a putt which was definitely a mistake especially with a wedge. For this hole, I gave myself a wedge as well and again left myself much longer of a putt than I should have. Like I said on the par 5, we are obviously not going to stick every single wedge close. However, I do want to work a little bit more on my distance control this year. One of the things that I've struggled previously is definitely being able to get my wedges perfectly which is something very important because as we know, we obviously have a higher chance to make a birdie with a wedge than a longer iron. So when we have a wedge in hand, that is the highest chance that we might possibly have during a round to make a birdie. Again, like I said, we're not always going to hit perfect shots. However, I do want to reduce my margin of error. I think that because of this distance gapping issue that I have with my wedges, one of the things that I tend to do is manipulate the club face and I feel like sometimes this might contribute to the directional issue that I might have with the wedges for instance on the par 5 where I hit it the right distance but too far to the right side. So without overcomplicating it, one of the things that I'm going to work on this year is definitely to sharpen and improve my wedge game. I think that this especially applies to when I play in Asia because of the different type of grass conditions. I find that when I play overseas, my wedge play is more consistent just because the grass is more consistent as well. So this is definitely something that I noticed and something that I will be continuing to work on throughout the year. So hopefully you guys will see an improvement in that area. And maybe I'll come back here and do another course vlog at this course because I know that I will have this kind of shots into the green. 
so it would be a good test to come back here and see how I do the next time around. Anyway, let's continue on with the vlog as we are on hole 7 which is an elevated green par 3. The pin today is located in front so I'm going with an 8 iron which should be the correct club for this distance. Because the pin's in front we want to carry it all the way there and generally in Asia you do want to play full carry so we're trying to hit this the full 137 yards. I didn't hit that directly down the sweet spot but I was a little bit confused as why I ended up being this short. Not the easiest chip to leave myself with here. I need to hit a little bit more of a flop style because there is not much green to work with. We don't want to be too cute here because you can definitely end up leaving yourself with another chip if you do. My ball came out really hot so I definitely did not leave myself in the ideal position but we still have got to try to channel all our energy into this putt and hit the best possible stroke and just hope that the ball goes in the hole. Another thing that I think a lot of people need to realize and to focus on is that a lot of things are outside of our control when it comes to golf. So like I said on the previous hole, all we can do is really try to give 100% to every single shot whether it be a putt, a chip, a drive or an iron shot. Because past that, there's not much that we can control. You can hit a perfect shot and suddenly a gust of wind comes and it blows it offline or blows it 10 yard shot. You can hit a perfect chip and hit a rock and bounce offline. You can even hit a perfect shot directly at the pin, going straight for the slam dunk, it hits the pin and goes OB. There are so many things that we cannot control in golf. God. Even after playing golf for this many years, it is very hard to always remember to focus on the things that we can control. Things that we can control are such as ourselves, the things that we need to do before, during and after a shot, and not all the outside factors that could affect the shot. This not only includes nature and natural factors, but also other factors such as other people. We cannot control if we're playing with a slow player, we cannot control if we're playing with a fast player. All we can do is make sure that we have good tempo and good timing and that we are not too slow, not too fast. So that if we do play with slow players or if we play with fast players, we are confident enough in ourselves to know that we are playing at a good pace, that we do not need to follow their pace. Another example we playing under pressure. Whether it is a pressure situation or if it's a regular Sunday foursome, playing with your best friends. Pressure comes in many forms and all we can do is focus on the shot that we have. Yes, our breathing may be elevated. Yes, we may feel like we're going a little bit faster or we might even feel like it's going in slow motion. However, if we focus on what we can control, all these outside factors slowly start to melt away. And if there's one thing that you take from this video, I hope that this year you'll learn how to focus on yourself and not the outside factors that might affect your game and most of the time would affect it negatively. Never forget that the only thing we can control is ourselves. If we hit a good shot, if we hit a good stroke and the ball still doesn't go where we want it to, what can you do? That's golf, that's why we love it and that's why we come back for more. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We made 9 pars during this round and one of my goals for this year is to start making more birdies and we're gonna start by improving that wedge game. Catch you guys in the next vlog. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video for more golf with Jen.